Salem Buzzstone. I'd like to welcome Genevieve Napier. Jen, welcome on board. We're so happy to have you. Hello, Josh. I did a story on a 15-year-old female kickboxer. She's the North American current champion, and uh, she beat a 30-year-old to win the title. And she's quite exceptional, and it's a good story. So take a gander. Well, I did a story on a bunch of graffiti artists who aren't too happy with the city's attempts to eradicate graffiti. So we did a story on that. I did my story on a guy named Max. He rides motocross, and he's also the star of French TV shows, and he's been in all these movies. And so we went to hang out with him and ride a couple motorbikes. Well, sir. Don't <laughs> oh, ever call me sir. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, I went around and taste tested French fries all over the city. Um, there's a whole bunch of places popping up, and me and Jen check them out, so we tell you what's good and what's not good. Like that. Okay, Jerry, what about you? Uh, I did a really neat story on a comic artist. He's from Montreal. He just created his first comic. It's called Awakening. He's never been to an art school, and he does everything at home, and he's just totally awesome. I'm sitting in this really neat bedroom. Unfortunately, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the guy who drew this fine artwork. I just happened to stumble into my own art style. I never have any education in the arts or whatsoever. My style, or oh, I wouldn't say style because I don't, I don't even know I have one. I just know that people say it's very dark and gothic. Awakening is like a personal journal of mine. It it jogs down my dreams mm -hmm. and uh, my the problems I have towards life itself. But I put it in a world that is more fantastic and is more imaginary. I would I would be comfortable to fit in. I know it's kind of weird, but since it's pretty dark. The first issue, like this one, is explaining like. The characters, like who's the main character in this? Awakening has no main character. It's about the city itself. Uh, the story itself, it's kind of complicated. I've planned to do it in um, in a limited series, but a three-part limited series to complete the stories. I called it Awakening because it's a story about angels. And this story is about the angels that have been abandoned and forgotten on this planet. And uh, people just started calling them vampires. The black and white, like, how come you uh, do your comics in black and white and not in color? To me, black and white represents me in a way that I feel black and white. Okay. Uh, like, I would feel happy or I would feel really down and don't want to talk to anybody. The first page goes, uh, he's talking about the subject and mm -hmm. he throws his cigarette out the window and okay. it lands on the card next to him. And the other guy gets mad. Yeah, the other guy gets mad. He says, well, it's kind of a, a joke thing, but yeah. it's kind of violent, too. Alternative, that's the style of comic you write and create and draw. Yeah. What is exactly alternative? Um, alternative is all that is not mainstream, like mm -hmm. Marvel, DC, or all that is like very Spider -Man, popular. Like Spider-Man, Yeah, it, okay. stuff that everybody knows. Yeah. Like, uh, Alternative is more underground, and it, it has a specific kind of readers. Could you uh, tell me a bit more about where uh, Awakening is going to be distributed? Across Canada, uh, across the United States, mm -hmm. and across the UK. I mean, all the way to uh, Australia, or England, everywhere. This is number one, and this is number two. And right here we have the, the artist himself, yeah. Chen Jay, and check out the, the art. Right. I mean, what kind of books do you like? My first issue has done uh, very well. Oh, yeah. it, uh, we had an order of uh, around a thousand copies, which is really hard to do when you're starting comic book company, and we didn't buy any publicity or anything. Like I said to uh, one of my friends, it's not like uh, Superman, oh, I've saved the universe, ha ha ha, like it's more down to earth. How does your family feel about like you doing comics? Are they happy or they, do they get tired of it? Or, okay, how do they? Mm, like most uh, Asian families, um, they don't think drawing would give me any future. But mm -hmm. I have a more modern way of thinking, I guess. Is there anything you'd like to say to the 
public or in your audience that are watching? Be true to yourself, and um, that's what I'm doing. And if you love this kind of idea, well, I guess I would really love them to read my book. the colors I think it helps to uh, give a particular city a sense of character and place if like a, a nice monument and stuff and they just put graffiti stupid graffiti on it I think it's it's just free ugly thing I, I don't like that but like this I mean it, I like it I think it's great I think it's art for today's younger artists I guess and I think it should be allowed no one's scared of graffiti. graffiti. You can't be scared of art. You're not scared when you walk into an art gallery. You walk into an art gallery and you see paintings, are you going to be scared? I've seen nude paintings, I've seen violent paintings, I've seen lots of things. Paintings that depict rape, that depict violence, and everything. And they're not scary, they're someone's experience. That's someone speaking, that's someone coming out of their inner shell that they can't talk about and they're expressing it on a wall and in a painting. You have to respect that, you can't, you can't be scared of it. It's not threatening. It's not, the painting's not going to jump out and kill you. Graffiti's been around for 30 years. Now, the city's trying to eradicate it. But the artists say it'll never die, that graffiti's going to live on forever. Is there a solution? The art of graffiti, the art of vandalism, is the only, the only form of calligraphy that's left in our day and age. The city of Montreal just recently spent over $200,000 on an anti-graffiti campaign, right? Do you think that's even, like, affecting at all the graffiti scene here in Montreal? It's encouraging it to, to, to become even stronger and it's, keeping, it's getting the writers closer together and keeping them tighter and making them into a a tighter community and they're gonna go out and do more of it now they're gonna go out and fight the city whether it's a first world country or a third world country you have graffiti and it just took longer than other places if the city wants to fight it well they can start a war but you know we're i'm grow up one day you know i won't be writing on walls but you know there will be another generation of kids that scribble and so on and so forth it just it started you know it's on vandalism we're not against graffiti art we're not against graffiti artists we're not against youth expression we're not against anything of that we're against vandalism a lot of times um you'll go through the city walls or city tunnels or whatever and you'll see yeah. uh graffiti or whatever personally when i drive by i like it i mean i like seeing whatever happens to be new up on the wall or whatever people still say we want a clean city can you go on? And having a clean city means we have to put millions of dollars every year in taking off graffiti. I woke up the other morning and I had graffiti on my wall. If someone just goes and does, does a drawing on my wall, what's the next step? You know, so I felt insecure about it. And you're using, you're using the shadows from the trees and yeah. highlighting? Yeah, yeah. I believe the city looks at what's happening on the wall as a form of expression for these kids, as a means of self-expression. And they wish to encourage that, but on a level which is necessarily safe. Uh, I understand the city wants to get rid of random tagging, but it, most of that work is, is not done by the writers, the graffiti writers in the various communities. Um, so much of that work is done by small kids, uh, drunk college students. I, you have so many great walls. You have so many walls like this all over the city. It would be so interesting for me to see any sort of color. I'd like to see more of a dialogue between the city, the writers, and other, other mural painters. We're, we're using our abilities to create art and beauty and then they're coming out with like a program to, to oppress us and, and put us in jail for making art? Uh, I don't know. 
I don't think that's cool. I start at five. My uh, my uncle's got um, a garage, and he 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 was um, would have a, a bike in the showroom, and uh, I saw it, and my parents buy me that bike. When I got the uh, real motocross, it's like the much bigger bike. Yeah, uh, I go to um, Buddy Ford. That this is um, a place that they teach you how to jump and uh, all the motocross um, techniques. And after school, uh, I, I, prepare, I prepare my, my stock. After school, I go home. I put my bike on. I came here, practice, um, like two, two hours. Uh, when, when it's not so hot, I came here like um, three, three days a week. I like competition because it's uh, it's it, it's very special the the feeling that you get when you have 20 bikes uh, behind you. You don't make some tricks when you race. You, you just uh, concentrate. Yeah, concentrate. yeah, concentrate yourself on on the track, on the bike, on the yeah, getting to finish line. He's come a long way. He's getting better like every time, and uh, he's got like a lot of time to develop and get a much better rider. But uh, I expect good things from him. He's, he's a good kid. You're also involved in acting, so can you talk a bit about that? Because you ride bikes, you're in school, and you act. I start acting like at nine, nine years old. Um, my first job was for uh, Aventure Electronique. <laughs> and after this, I make uh, four movies. Um, Big parts? Yeah, like uh, Mathusalem, uh, Les Marchands de Silence, Léolo. <laughs> Do any women motocross race? There used to be a, a women's class in Canada, oh, in Quebec actually, because of population. There's more in the U.S. obviously, but there's a big national championship in the States. But uh, I don't know if a girl in Canada made it to pro, but there are some girls that were pretty impressive. They were, they were putting some guys to shame. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> Go girls. Well, they're going to try to get me to ride one of these things, but first of all, I need the right clothing and the right equipment. So, Max's brother, Cal, has been nice enough to lend me his shirt, so uh, he's going to wear mine for now. What's the first thing that I need to put on before I go biking? Okay, first of all, you, you have to put on this pants. We have a special pad here to protect not hurt, knees. yeah, protect me. Oh, look like space boots, like yeah. something you'd walk on the moon in. like a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger or something. Here we go. No, I, no, no, honestly, I swear, I'm not doing this. I don't want to, I don't want to drive. I'm too scared. I'm not getting on the bike. I knew he was gonna get off! I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you if you get off the bike again. Please don't get off. <laughs> Let the brake up. We can't, we can't. Okay. Oh my God. So? Never doing that ever again. <laughs> what do I look for in a french fry? A big, fat, thick potato. I like them when, I'm not, when they're not greasy. Thick and uh, well cooked. Not too greasy. Fresh? <laughs> well, greasy is good. Not good for the heart, but it's good. Greasy. How expensive they are, how good they are. It used to be that if you wanted fries in Montreal, this was the place to come. But times are changing. There's a whole bunch of new places to get fries at all hours of the morning. And our good deed of the day was going around and stuffing our faces with french fries.
So what do we want? Is a small fry enough for two people? Yeah, the small fry looks like this one. Okay, that's enough. I think, what about the Saint one? Lemon and uh, black pepper. I don't have a chocolate. Well, that could be, you know, that could actually be pretty interesting. Well, we can try anything we want to. We could try all of them. Mom? This is mondo, mayonnaise and curry, home tartar sauce. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank Enjoy. Curry on french fries. So? Tastes like curry. The garlic's good? Mm hmm Yeah, but if you have to kiss somebody afterwards. Just make sure they eat it too. The best one of the legendary I love would say. There's no napkins. Can you explain what is the pate à fin aux légumes? We put du fromage, des frites, uh, des légumes, puis piment, champignons, oignons, avec une petite sauce uh, maison faite au vin. Voilà. Wow. That's pretty good. Mm. That's really good. Mm. It's like French fries and stir fries or something. Bien, on essaie d'être le plus personnel qu'on peut pour euh, que le monde sente bien chez, comme chez eux. Tell me why you think your fries are different here, or how they're special or unique. Or... Well, it's because of the preparation that we put them. They're cooked twice. They're blanched first, then they cool down, and then we recook them. Une petite frite, oui. puis on va prendre plusieurs sauces. Ok. Is it hot? Is it spicy? Mm -hmm. But I like spicy stuff. These fries are good, but they're different. Yeah, like, look they're how crispy. Look how light they are. There's no sogginess In color here. That is. What's the verdict on atmosphere? Well, the other one is like really cute. But I don't think that anybody else has made fries that can compare with these. Don't my watch dad. me spill all over myself. And you like the fries? Yeah, they are very good. That's how it's yeah. good. Soft, soft tartare. Like they are it. really good. These are Le Fleur French fries, the traditional French fry of Montreal. For me, it's a bit too greasy. But you know what? I know people who are still faithful to Le Fleurs. Okay, for me, this is Coronary Central. This is death in a basket. For me, the best fries were fricadella. For me, too. Atmosphere-wise, I really, really liked um, patates patata. You know, like you think we're um, recognizing when you come in. Yeah, kind of like a little family place. Mondo Fit gets points because the guy was hot. Uh, Mondo Fit is like one of those places. It was trying too hard. It, it, it smacked of effort. And in terms of Lafleur's, you know... God knows I ended up there many a night at 3 o'clock in the morning. Can't beat that. If you saw a girl like Laura Cordelione walking down the street, you probably wouldn't consider her much of a threat at a first glance. But throw some boxing gloves on her and she becomes a lethal weapon. What made you decide to fight competitively? Um, well, I like fighting in class and it was something that I wanted to do. Uh, um, I saw, like, uh, I saw my karate teacher, he, fought, he fights professionally and uh, it always, you know, it always something I wanted to try. When you talk to her, shy girl, um, doesn't look like, uh, doesn't look like uh, intimidating, but when she, put, she steps into that ring, it's like, uh, she transforms them. Kickboxing is a sport, it's a fighting, it's using your legs and your hands, like boxing. And uh, it's full contact, you punch the head, everything has to be above the belt, your kicks. Over, over, over! Time! You have to devote yourself really to the sport, you have to really want to fight. You have to have it in your head, a lot of it is even mentally, you have to really know what you want to do. Um, you have to have your head straight, set on a, like a good path, you know? You're 15 years old and you hold the North American world title. 
And how does it make you feel? Um, I'm really proud that I did it, um, that uh, I won and that I that I made this title. It was tough. I was really nervous. There was a lot of uh, pressure on it because um, she was twice my age and uh, she probably had more experience than me. I thought it was um, too much putting her in with a 29-year-old, but I knew she, she did all her homework, meaning in training. She did her wor wor work. She did her hard hours of training into the gym, into the school. Um, she ate the right foods. Mentally, she was prepared. Physically, she was prepared. I said, let's put her in. Hey, Laura, you want to grab four juice? Yes, please. All right. Dora is there for me. Dora is um, willing, you know, like to bring me to my matches. That's uh, something, you know. The support is always there, of course. Uh, my family, everybody, uh, you know, they're 100% um, they're behind it. Uh. First, I was skeptical about all of this and all this uh, this fighting, but now I'm more worried about the other people when I saw you in action. <laughs> can kick like a, a person training, a 160 pound man, she uh, hits us that hard. How does being a kickboxing champ affect your personal life at all? It doesn't affect it. People are uh, surprised because I'm a girl and uh, they don't think girls are really into this kind of sports. Uh, but uh, they're happy, they're, uh, they're happy for me. I mean, that I'm doing it, you know, to show that girls can do it. So I heard you have a very unusual uh, nickname. What is it? How'd you get it? A lightning, I got it to my crush. My uh, instructor gave it to me. Laura, lightning, so it sounds good and she's as quick as lightning. So Laura, I hear you do uh, a trick uh, with people and cigarettes in their mouths and I've been trying to stop smoking and maybe this is uh, gonna give me incentive to stop, so go for it. Okay. <laughs> Kickboxing something you look at as a hobby or something you want to do with the rest of your life? Um, well, right now I'm not sure. You know, I just want to continue. I want to do my fights, uh, see what happens, and then I'm not sure if I want to go professional yet. And uh, how about next year, Italy? Laura's going to get a shot uh, at the world title, the women's world title. She's ranked number eight in her division worldwide. And um, if there's a shot, she's got a few tune-up fights beforehand. and just gets her ready for the world championships next year in Italy. You think she stands a chance? A uh, chance. I, uh, I know she, for a fact, I, I know she'll win the world title next year. It's guaranteed. That's it for the show. We'll see you again next week. If you got something you'd like to see on Barzone, just call us, write us, fax us, or even email us.